Royal Caribbean and Carnival are the two largest cruise operators in the world, with several similarities but also many major differences in what they offer. Today, in our most comprehensive guide yet, we will lay out the key factors you should consider when looking to book your next cruise. Regardless of if you are a first-time traveler or a seasoned cruiser, we hope you'll find this informative. You can enjoy this video from start to finish or watch it by chapters linked in the description below. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Starting off with cruise prices. Although Carnival and Royal Caribbean both offer affordable cruising options, Carnival remains the unbeatable cheapest major cruise line, regularly offering $70 to $80 per person per night on balcony cabins, even on newer ships. The only large cruise line coming close to competing with Carnival's budget prices is MSC, which has recently expanded the Caribbean offerings as well. Additionally, Carnival offers especially generous pricing for solo travelers, so if you're traveling alone, keep an eye out for Carnival. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, has huge price differences between the ships. While older vessels sail with similar prices to Carnival, in-season newer or recently renovated vessels often sell way above $100 per person per night for a balcony cabin. The bottom line is, while both offer competitive rates and good bang for your buck, Carnival will generally be cheaper. When it comes to both cruise line's fleets, we will start to see some major differences. Royal Caribbean's approach to cruise ships is go big or go home. The company owns the five largest cruise ships in the world, and it's not even close. Bigger ships means more space for unique amenities, like onboard parks, more pools, and innovative features throughout. Royal Caribbean also invests heavily in improving and renovating older ship classes, so even the oldest ships will feel new and modern. With its newest ship, the Mardi Gras, Carnival is now moving in the direction of larger ships with comparable amenities as well. But much of its fleet still consists of small or mid-sized cruise ships, and with its oldest cruise ship now 30 years old, you might see some clear signs of age depending on the ship you sail on. So regardless of what cruise line you sail on, make sure to do your research and explore the ships beforehand to avoid any surprises. This leads us to the next point, onboard amenities. One common theme in this video will be the juxtaposition of innovation and tradition. Royal Caribbean, for instance, is a pioneer in onboard venues, with extremely well-designed and innovative onboard spaces. Many ships feature large royal promenades with stores and bars, and large two-story venues, like the stunning 270 Lounge on Quantum-class ships. So even though you can expect similar types of amenities on board all major cruise lines, Royal Caribbean will always try to have it bigger and more innovative. The same goes for outdoor and sports spaces. While most ships on both cruise lines have basketball courts and mini golf courses, Royal Caribbean has many special unique features like rock climbing walls, surfing simulators, iFly skydiving simulators, zip lines, indoor ice skating rinks and more. Quantum class ships even have a Cplex sports arena with bumper cars, trapeze classes and roller skating. Carnival on the other hand is still trying to catch up with its newer ships offering ropes courses, roller coasters, or sky ride, and aerial bike ride. Additionally, Carnival's newer ships beat Royal Caribbean in terms of lower deck outdoor spaces. The Carnival Vista, for instance, features a stunning aft pool and nice ocean-facing promenades, something that is missing from all Royal Caribbean ships at the moment. Both cruise lines have invested a lot in upgrading many of the ships with massive aquaparks and water slides, so if that's a must for you, you'll be covered regardless. Related to onboard activities, we have entertainment. You can expect all major cruise lines to offer a similar set of daily activities, from poolside contests to trivia to music to bingo. The major difference between Royal Caribbean and Carnival, however, lies in their entertainment focus. Carnival ships, known as the fun ships, all feature the Punchliner Comedy Club, where you can consistently find some of the best comedic acts at sea. Additionally, Carnival also features more partying and nightlife activities compared to other cruise lines. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, focuses on elegant and high-tech entertainment. While Carnival mostly features shorter 30-minute music shows, Royal Caribbean offers longer Broadway or Broadway-style shows on many of their ships. They also have top-tier unique entertainment options depending on the ship, including diving, acrobatics, and ice skating shows. So depending on your preferences, you might prefer either one although both will probably not disappoint in this category. Next, we have a big one, food. 
Both offer many complimentary dining options, although Carnival's dining experience will feel more casual and laid back. They also offer more American-focused dishes and poolside eateries, including passenger favorite Guy's Burger Joint, Tandoori Grill, and Blue Iguana Cantina, all for free. While Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, has more variety when it comes to international foods and healthier options. Another big difference are specialty dining options. While almost all restaurants on board Carnival shifts are included, Royal Caribbean has many full-cost venues, including popular staples such as Jamie's Italian, award-winning Chops Grill Steakhouse, and Wonderland, an imaginative dining experience shown here. Some of which can be quite expensive at $40 to $50 per person. And this brings us to onboard spending. Note that on both cruise lines you don't have to spend any money on board. Much of the food and most entertainment will come included. But also keep in mind that cruise lines make nearly 30% of their income from onboard expenses and expect to pay extra for internet, spa treatments, most fitness lessons, gambling and shore excursions on both cruise lines. Generally, you'll have to spend less on a Carnival than on a Royal Caribbean cruise. That is partially because Carnival offers budget-friendly amenities, such as self-service laundromats and irons, while Royal Caribbean doesn't offer any. But also because by and large, things will just be slightly cheaper on board Carnival ships. When planning your cruise, you might also realize that pre-cruise budgeting isn't that straightforward for Royal Caribbean cruises. That is because Royal Caribbean, unlike Carnival, uses dynamic pricing, which means that onboard prices depend on the specific cruise ship, itinerary, length and dates of the cruise you're on. This also applies to drink packages. The unlimited beverage package on Royal Caribbean will cost anywhere from $63 to $89 per person per day. Carnival's latest price, on the other hand, is $52 if booked online and $57 if purchased on board. Note, however, that Carnival does have a 15 alcoholic beverages limit in any 24-hour interval. On the flip side, Royal Caribbean is more generous on the alcohol you can take with you on embarkation day. The company will let you board with two wine bottles per adult versus Carnival's one bottle limit. Moving on to staterooms, Carnival is known to have larger than average rooms with bigger showers, but due to the age of the ships, they often also come with a generally older look and feel. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, has more modern and well-designed rooms. The company does offer a huge variety of both family-oriented cabins with connecting rooms, as well as many high-end options including two-story loft suites. Certain vessels also feature virtual balconies in inside cabins, giving you live views from the outside. Most Carnival ships stick solely with the traditional stateroom types, although newer ships do feature family harbour rooms for families to enjoy. A quite significant and important difference is the onboard atmosphere. When cruising on Carnival, you can expect a party-friendly fun ship with more outgoing passengers and casual dining. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, aims to have more of a luxurious, grand and adventurous atmosphere. The cruise line has many upscale venues and a higher percentage of passengers participate in the formal dress-up nights, whereas Carnival is more liberal with the dress code. The atmosphere is definitely strongly related to the passengers' demographics. While both cruise lines mainly serve families, Carnival is also popular amongst college-age cruisers during breaks. Royal Caribbean, on the other hand, is also frequented by couples in the 30s to 50s. One thing to note is that Royal Caribbean also has longer cruises, lasting almost two weeks. Those cruises generally have less families with children and an overall older median age. And this brings us directly to the cruises themselves. As just mentioned, in addition to regular one-week cruises, Royal Caribbean also offers some extended 8 to 14 day sailings. Carnival, on the other hand, has many shorter 3 to 4 night getaways and almost no voyages longer than 9 days. In terms of American departure ports, Carnival currently has the edge with 18 embarkation ports over Royal Caribbean's 12. By visiting smaller ports such as Mobile, New Orleans, Jacksonville and Norfolk, Carnival can reduce passengers' expenses by avoiding flight costs. In terms of international cruises, however, Royal Caribbean has a clear edge. Don't be fooled by its name. Royal Caribbean doesn't just sail the Caribbean, but it's also very active in Europe, the Middle East, Asia and Australia. Carnival is primarily focused on the US, with a smaller presence in Australia as well, which can also be seen as a benefit, as all its ships are directly geared towards the American market. 
Next up, we have private destinations. Carnival owns Half Moon Cay, a natural paradise in the Bahamas, while Royal Caribbean owns Labadee, Haiti, and Coco Cay, Bahamas, two stunning private islands with many activities, special features, and beautiful, stunning beaches. Royal Caribbean put a huge investment in Coco Cay, and it's paying off as for many cruisers, it's arguably the best private cruising destination out there and a major reason for choosing the cruise line in the first place. When it comes to onboard service, both cruise lines have similar crew to passenger ratios, the standard 1 to 1.4. And although your experience might differ from cruise to cruise, both cruise lines have extremely competent crew members. Lastly, both cruise lines have a loyalty program based on the number of days you've sailed with each company. Royal Caribbean's crown and anchor system and Carnival's VIFP, very important fun person, both offer similar perks such as priority boarding, exclusive events, and small branded gifts. Overall, in summary, here are the main differences. Carnival is a budget-conscious, family-friendly cruise line with a casual, party-like atmosphere. Royal Caribbean is a more upscale, global company focusing on the wow factor with big ships, high-tech entertainment, and unique features. Bottom line, it's vacation, and you'll likely enjoy any cruise you go on. We hope you enjoyed, and if you've been on any of these cruise lines, leave a comment down below and share your experience. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing for more weekly traveling content. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep cruising.